Sound the alarm, gather the people, gather the elders, let the ministers wail. I take back the years, the enemy is stolen, Lord you are coming, holy visitation. You'll come to this nation, touch this generation, holy visitation. Sound the alarm and gather the people, gather the elders, let the ministers wail. God, take back the years, the enemy stolen, Lord, you are coming. Holy visitation. We return to you with fasting and weeping and mourning. Oh, my Lord, you're returning. We like you weeping between porch and altar. Pour out your spirit on your sons and your daughters. Turn to you, fasting and weeping and mourning. Oh, my Lord, you're returning. We lie here weeping between porch and altar. Pour out your spirit on your sons and your daughters. We lie here weeping between porch and altar. Pour out your spirit on your sons and your daughters. We dance. We shout. Lift up our voice, let your kingdom come down, and we dance. We shout. We lift up our voice, let your kingdom come down, and we dance. We shout. We lift up our voice, let your kingdom come down, and we dance. We shout. We lift up our voice, let your kingdom come down, and we dance. We shout. We lift up our voice, let your kingdom come down. I do. 
I lay my life down Cast my cares at your feet Jesus here in this moment with you I have all that I need I draw near I draw near to you you So we loose Devin to whatever he's supposed to do this morning in part here. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Um, My wife's going to share a song with you just to elevate our faith so we can remember who our God is. Um, I got here in a real cool way. I was at a school of ministry intensive in Kannapolis with uh, Apostle Scott Neri, 425 Power Evangelism. And uh, this man was visited by Jesus after he came out of Reinhard Bunke's Power Evangelism Ministry. He was with Todd White. He said one night uh, the Lord woke him up at like 3 o'clock and he went downstairs to pray. And as he prayed, he said the room turned electric. And he felt authority walk in the room. And he turned around and looked, and Jesus was there. And he said, Jesus Jesus said to him, Scott, I thought I told you to preach the gospel to all nations. He said, I am, Lord. I'm traveling all over the globe. I can't hardly do anymore. He said, yeah, but you forgot the 50 states of the United States. He said, I don't want you to travel out the United States anymore. And he said, I want you to view each state like its own country. Because I'm the one that sets the borders. He said, I want you to name the ministry 420 Fire Power Evangelism. He said, it's going to get people's attention. Some of you might not know, but 420 is the national high time. And he said, but it's based off of 1 Corinthians 420. The kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. He said, my church is walking in talk. And I want you to wake them back up to power. And he said, America shall be saved through a grassroots movement. If you notice Reinhard Bunke, he began to say, America shall be saved at the end of his ministry. Reinhard Bunke, he he died last year. His 
memorial was this year on 1 420. It's no mistake I'm in the place where Bob Jones was at. I was traveling across the sea to Israel on February 2nd, the day the Chiefs won the Super Bowl with the Navajo Nation president. See, only God can do things like this. I didn't know where this place, I didn't know Bob Jones was here. But God told me while I was at that intensive, he said, I want you to go talk to Rodney Howard Brown. And I looked up Rodney Howard Brown. And he said he's going to be an hour and a half away from where I was at. I was like, man, the Lord said, you got to go. You got to go now. And I told Scott, God's telling me to go. He said, well, you need to pray about it because we're supposed to have a service today. <laughs> I said, I already prayed. God told me to go. So he didn't like it. I texted him so he wouldn't be offended. Little did I know God was trying to bring me to the place where he wanted to do something, where he had spoken. See, but God, God's words, they never are void. And what God began in a person, he's going to continue it in that person, but it's generational. That's what you need to understand about this church. There's a generational mandate on this church. At the same time you had Bob Jones, the prophet, you had Bob Jones, the grand dragon of the Ku Klux Klan. There's a gate, a demonic gate here that God wants to deal with, and he's chosen you to deal with it because this man can't deal with it alone. It's going to take all of us. Some of the things you're already doing here prophetically that God's told us to do to take over the land. God brought me to the place of a man that he loved, and he said he was going to do some things, and he's not finished doing them. And I want you to listen to this song. And let it elevate our faith because God's still the God that parted the Red Sea. And it looks like an impossible situation right now. But really what we're seeing is the deliverance of a nation. And if we don't cower down and obey the roar of the devil right now, we'll occupy and drive this devil out the land. And you'll see the greatest harvest of souls the earth has ever seen. That's where we're at. But God's trying to get the church to rise. Because if there's a plague in the land, it's our fault. Maybe we counted the number of our army like David did. Maybe we put our faith in the things of this earth rather than the God that gave us the things of this earth. God's looking for a supernatural people to rise up. And maybe he's going to use the church where Bob Jones was to ignite a fire that'll wake a church back up to the power of a living God. I'm telling you revivals here y'all but we got to realize it we got to believe it because God's waiting he's saying all of heaven's ready to move with you but are you ready to move are you ready to believe me because I'm still the God that the wind and the waves obey and my hand's not short but I'm looking for a people that'll say yes will you say yes to God today we say yes to God today. God, elevate our faith today. Elevate our faith to know that you're still a miracle worker. That you still raise the dead. It's no, I, you know what? It's coincidental that that place is called Seymour because that was a one-eyed black man, the son of a slave that came out of Centerville, Louisiana. That started the re, a revival where the sustainable, visible power of God was in a building for three and a half years. And that man prophesied there was a revival coming that would be twice as strong as Azusa Street. And it would heal the racial divide of the United States of America that time is now that time is now I've come to tell you that time is now what we've been praying for is here and God's saying will you move with me will you believe with me will you come out the boat and step on the impossible let this song elevate our faith. Let God impart into us the revelation that if you hold your staff up the, the, the sea will part in front of you and you'll walk out on dry land I'm going to leave you with this image. My wife's going to sing this song. You see, in Azusa Street, the testimony said they used to pray for people with no arms and no legs. They would unscrew peg legs. And as they prayed in the visible Shekinah glory of God, wouldn't that elevate your faith? He said they watched the bone grow out first. And as that bone grew out, they'd watch the flesh chase it. People of God, we're going to have to have a different type of love to see this. Arduous love. A different kind of way. It's in the Bible, but we haven't been walking in it. But if we will, God's ready to move right now. It's time for us to believe God is who he says he is. Georgia, please bless us.
as I search the world, but it couldn't feel me, cause man's empty praise, treasures that fade, are never enough. But then you came along And you put me back together And every desire is now satisfied Yes, here in your love Yes, I search the world But it couldn't fill me Yes, man's empty praise And treasures that fade They are never enough But then you came along And you put me back together Every desire, it's now satisfied, yes, here in your love. Cause oh, there's nothing that is better than you, Lord, there is nothing that is better than you, Lord, there is nothing. You see, nothing is better than you. You saw there's nothing that is better than you. No, there is nothing that is better than you. Lord, there is nothing. You see, nothing is. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness cause my failures and flaws Lord you've seen them all and you still call me free cause the God of the mountain He's still God of the valley And there's not a place That your mercy and grace Won't find me again Cause oh there's nothing That is better than you Lord there is nothing that is better than you No, there is nothing You see, nothing is better than you You yes, so oh, there's nothing That's better than you No, there is nothing That is better than you Lord, there is nothing you see, nothing is better than you. Cause you turn morning to dancing. You turn beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. Cause you're the You're the only one who can You turn graves into goddess You turn bones into armies You turn seas into highways You're the only one who can 
No, there's nothing that is better than you. No, there is nothing that is better than you. Lord, there is nothing. You see, nothing is better than you. Come on, there is nothing. No, there is nothing that is better than you. Lord, there is nothing that is better than you. No, there is nothing. You see, nothing is better than you. Come on, there's nothing that's better. He turns morning to dancing. And he gives beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. Because you're the only one who can. You turn graves into goddess. And you turn bones into You turn seas into highways Cause you're the only one who can You turn graves into goddess And you turn bones into armies You turn seas into highways Cause you're the only one who can You're the only one who can Ta-da-da-da-da-da makishi Urukum baradadana maishi Lord, turn them into highways, God Turn the sea that's in front of us into a highway, God Turn it into a highway, God cause those that had died to become gardens. Lord, let life spring up because of the seed that fell to the ground. Lord, the devil has overplayed his hand. We will not shrink back, God. We will not shrink back, God. Come on, Georgia. Impart that into our hearts. He turns morning to day. He gives beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. And you turn graves into goddess. You turn bones into armies. And you turn seas. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into goddess. You turn bones into armies. And you turn seas into highways. Cause you're the He's the only one who can. So there's nothing that's better than you. Lord, there is nothing that's better than you. Lord, there is nothing. You see, nothing is Let's just sing that together so there's nothing. No, there is nothing that's better than you. Jesus, there is nothing that is better than you. Lord, there is nothing. See, nothing is better than you. I just feel like.
like the Lord said, let's just sing, there's nothing greater than you. Lord, there's nothing that is greater than you. Lord, there is nothing that is greater than you. Lord, there is nothing. See, nothing is greater than you. No sickness, no disease. There's nothing is greater. Oh, there's nothing that is greater than you, Lord. There is nothing that is greater than you, Lord. There is nothing. No, nothing is greater than you. As greater is he that is in me. He that is in the world. You're greater, God. Father, they thank you today, Lord. You've called us to occupy. I hear the scripture that says, I don't want you to be ignorant of the suffering that I endured in the providence of Asia. It was indeed beyond our ability to bear. We even felt the very sentence of death in our hearts. But all this happened so we would not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He has delivered us, and he will continue to deliver us. Father, we lock our eyes on you, Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Lord, we see Jesus elevated in the sky, high and lifted up, his train filling the temple above COVID, above racial rioting. We see Jesus high and lifted up as COVID shrinks. As racial rioting shrinks, Lord God, we look to our source. We look unto the hills from where our help comes from. Lord, we embrace you, Lord God. We see that you're trying to wake the church up, God. Lord, we awake now, God. We commit to awake, Lord God, to set down our idols, those things that we put our faith in above you, God. We lock our eyes with you, Jesus. Just as Jesus endured the cross, scorning its shame for the joy that was set before him. Lord, we peer into the joy that's set before us today, Lord God. The greatest harvest of souls the earth has ever seen. No doubt they could be bloodshed. But Lord, we do not look for survival, but we look unto conquest to receive the fruit of your suffering. The greatest hour of the church is before us. And for those who have eyes to see, Lord, we know we'll be able to navigate and participate, God. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for words of wisdom that come from the Spirit. Words of power, Lord God. Lord, that when evil, Lord God, comes into the land, you lift up a standard. Lord, we declare that standard is here. His name is Jesus, Yahshua HaMashiach, the wisdom of God, the power of God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that there is a secret wisdom that is destined for our glory before time began. Lord, that you have given us the spirit is from you and not from the world. That we may know freely what you've given us, Lord God. And that spirit searches even the deep things of God. And Lord, that spirit man on the inside of us makes judgments about all things. Though he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. For who shall instruct the Lord? But we have the mind of Christ. Father, we tap into the mind of Christ today. Lord, we submit to your leading, Lord. We declare, Lord, we are but your body. And Lord, we look into the head, Lord. So, Lord, we put aside all 
structure that we've developed, Lord God. We put it there for a reason, Lord, but we say, as Frank Bartleman said, we were set free from the ecclesiastical hierarchy. God, lead your meeting. Lead our lives, God. Would we decrease so you may increase? Make my tongue like a ready writer. In your hand, the one that wills it, God. We thank you for what you're about to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Is anybody's faith elevated? Hallelujah. He's still a miracle worker. He's still a miracle worker. But guess what? He's going to do it through you, each and every one of you. And none of us are qualified to do it. He is the qualifier, the great qualifier. He qualifies us. He qualifies the ones he calls. As soon as you surrender and submit to him, you become qualified. That's what God's looking. He's looking for a people that will yield to him. God's looking for one thing from you, a yes. My phone number is 225-YES-1234. He said it's the prescription to heal cities, heal nations. He's just looking for your yes. He's saying, whom shall we send? Who will go? And there's a people that say, yea, Lord, send me. And he'll touch your lips with the coal of his anointing and fill you with his spirit and his power. And you'll see great exploits that will astonish you. The cool thing about serving God is that you're just in awe, of, in awe of God all the time. You're wondering, how did God do that? How is that happening? And that's exciting. I've been blown away for about the past two and a half years. Um, this guy, Scott Neri, prophesied to me, told me everything about my life, and then uh, it turned my world upside down. And God began to lead me all kinds of places. And one of the things he said, he said, the waiting is over. He says, your season is now. He said, run towards the things I put in your heart and watch me work. That's what puts us in awe when we get to watch God work. And that's the season we're in, and it's for everybody. We're in the season. Uh, Peter prophesied, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about, that in the last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, that your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will uh, see visions. We are in that season. He spoke about it then, and they walked in it then, but guess what? God is bringing then to now. What we're stepping in is exactly what they're walking in, but the latter rain is going to be greater than the former rain. Because Jesus say, saves the best wine for last. And literally, that's what we're stepping in. And even you going door to door and house meetings, that's all exactly what God's saying right now. That's exactly because that's what they did. The early form of evangelism, he said, he said, drive out demons, heal the sick. He said, preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's in your hand. It's tangible. It's here. It's available for everyone. And he said, if there's a man of peace in that house, let your peace rest upon that house. He said, don't go from house to house. What he was saying is you need to disciple that person of peace in that house. It's the greatest form of evangelism the world has ever seen. It was what was given to the 12 and the 70, and that's what's coming on the land right now. And so as you walk and somebody gets saved, we need to go in that house where that son of peace is because that's the kind of evangelism that occupies the land. We've been bringing them into silos, but God said, no, this is to prepare the saints, you, for works of service. See, because God wants you to go to the house and begin to disciple these people. And the cool thing about it is all you got to do is open the book and be willing and the teacher's going to show up. See, Jesus was really trying to tell us some stuff when he said, call no man father, call no man rabbi, call no man teacher. For you have one teacher, it's the spirit of Christ. And see, that when, if you do it like Jesus said do it, you realize that none of those people were baptized in the Holy Spirit? Yet they were casting out demons, healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing lepers. Why? Because the anointing means smeared. He laid his hands on them, and he gave them delegated authority. That's when he says, uh, go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to uh, obey me in every way, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that was delegated authority. And with that authority, if you step into what Jesus said, Jesus is going to come, and he's going to help you fulfill it. Amen. And that's what we're seeing, and it's awesome. God's given us some strategic t uh, keys. I hear prophets all the time. They're telling us what's going to happen, and this is coming, and that's coming. And it just seems like everybody's laying down. Who, who gave us a prescription to fix it? 
I mean, oh, yeah, it's coming down. What were you supposed to? The church is just going to lay down and accept it? That's not what I read in the Bible. Jeremiah said, hey, you can stay in the good land if you'll repent. Right? You can stay in the good land. He said, this is what you got to do. They, they said, oh, oh my, axe, my axe head fell in the water. What do I need to do? He says, uh, here, pick this stick up, throw it in this spot, and the axe handle floated up. Prophets have solutions, y'all. Okay, we don't want to just prophesy about what's coming. God just don't want to beat everybody up. Judgment comes because it's the mercy of God, because he doesn't want any to perish but all to come to repentance. See, the solution is repentance. The church has to repent. We have to repent. Judgment starts in the house of God. If we look in the Bible, it gives us the blueprint. What does it say in the Bible? It says, uh, oh, there's a plague in the land. 70,000 people died. What do you got to do, David? You got to go purchase the threshing floor because you've sinned. Because you counted the number of the army that I gave you, and you put your faith in that instead of me. God told me, put up the uh, slide, Joe, of Key. He, my, my grandson, his middle name is Kilo, but it means Key. key Kilo actually means thousand, which means infinite in the Bible. Uh, the greatest harvest that the earth has ever seen. On August 11th, that's a little guy when he was born. August 11th, 2016, God spoke to me and he said, the greatest harvest of souls the earth has ever seen is about to hit the planet. But it will not come like most expect. The earth is going to go through a time of fasting. You know why I'm here today? Because I want that dude to have a future. And it demands a response on behalf of the church. Listen to what he said. He said, but it will not come like most expect. The earth is going to go through a time of fasting. Keep my picture up, Joe. It's going to go through a time of fasting that I am going to cause you to hunger and to thirst to teach you that man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of my mouth. See, when they, they searched Jesus out when he gave them the loaves and fishes, right? And what did he say? You come to me because I gave you loaves and fishes. But what you need is manna from heaven. He said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you can have no part to me. And, and, and so they all left. It was too hard for them to receive. But see, in the church, we've been doing things the way we wanted to do. We were taught strategies and church building things and all this stuff. I was indoctrinated with all this stuff, and it took God 10 years to empty me of it. And he was trying to teach me that this does not bring the power. The church wants a light machine and a smoke machine because it can't get the real light and the real smoke. When God had me do this revival, he said, don't bring a smoke machine in. Don't do a light show. He said, put correct us, Lord, in front of every entranceway. He said, put no flesh shall glory in my presence above the stage. He said, tell everybody about judgment. How many of you know you can't, like, get a a whole bunch of people on your team if you tell them about judgment? (laughs) This is what God told me. He said, you can get the multitudes and do nothing. He said, but you can take few and shift the nation. Because guess what? God's the only one that can deal with COVID. If we want God to deal with COVID, we got to get right with God. We got to get God's attention. What did he say? Second Chronicles 7, 14. He said, for my people who are called by my name, he don't put the indictment on the earth, on the world. It's on us, y'all. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Put up the slide of the billboard, uh, Joe. Seek my face. And turn from their evil ways. Then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. You know what the greatest sin of the church is? Competition. Because we're living for bread. And bread's earthly. This is what's wrong. we, We think that the army, the people in the church are giving us what we need and they're not. We're supposed to reach them and all that. But our faith's got to be in God. And when you have faith in God, it's going to be evident. Acts 1 8 says, Terry in Jerusalem to receive power from on high to be my witnesses. So you need power from on high to be a true witness. But but do we know what a witness is? See, most people don't know what a witness is. You really don't understand what a witness is. If you look it up in in the Greek and you look up the real meaning behind it, it says, who by the strength and genuineness of their faith are able to undergo a violent death. That's who a witness is. 
See, the world will see that Jesus came to earth when we stop fighting with each other. If there's division in the nation, it's our fault. How about the division between the Democratic and Republican parties and between the races is our fault because there's division in the church because we're so divided over inconsequential issues, we can't unify on the main issue, which is the dark forces that are plaguing our land. God's looking for a response from the church. I started praying about COVID. I'm like, God, because I wanted to do what God told me. I started praying. I'm like, God, we're going to, you know, I'm going to buy COVID. He said, I'm not stopping it. He said, the church is not awake yet. You know why? Because God's not going to let us go to hell. I want to articulate how we get a nation delivered. Deliverance isn't always fun. It's work. I mean, you, yeah, I'm just telling you, if you ever went through it, it's, it's something else. It's, I don't really enjoy deliverance, but we got to get this nation delivered. I'm going I'm to talk about two things to give us an understanding of how we deliver people. We, the church wants to preach about no religion and this and all that, but do you know that devils have legal rights? So you better understand the law and how it works because if you're not in Jesus, you're still under the law. If you're in Jesus, there is no law because you fulfill it naturally. And Jesus is the righteousness and all that. But to be in Jesus, you got to have your, his words in you and you got to be in his word. Okay, you got to walk. It says sons of God are those who follow the spirit of God. If you don't follow the spirit of God, then you ain't a son of God. Okay, the Bible says you don't hear God because you don't belong to God. You got to decide to belong to God through repentance. God's looking for your yes. So devils get into people through legal rights. So me and my wife, we took uh, women into our home for like 13 years. Everything I do, you know, everything I do is what I don't want to do. <laughs> everything. I'm telling you, me being here is because it wasn't what I wanted to do. That's what the scripture says. It says if you are led by the spirit, so you do not do what you want. See, because when I hear the power of God, it gives me the power to be that martyr, the power to be that witness, okay? So me and my wife, uh, we took these women in our house. I was arguing with my wife about it. I had all kinds of good reasons, and the Lord rebuked me. Everything I do, I get rebuked by God. And I'm just like, I'm cool with it. I like, okay. I want to hear what God has to say. He said, right in the middle of all my good reasons, and they were very good, he said, whatever you've done to the least one of these, you've done it unto me. And I'm like, oh, my God, God wants me to take crazy women in my house? Yeah. I've been talking about 12 crazy women from off the streets for 13 years. Now we live with the men. And my wife, this is outlandish, my wife is leading nine men by herself with a three-and-a-half-month-old kid. Three-and-a-half years, sorry. Show me the other picture, Joe. Here he is now. Where's Joe? Wow. Hallelujah. He's a three-and-a-half-year-old. But that don't make any sense, does it? That's doing what you don't want to do. Why? Because there's a nation at stake. Because there's a nation of little kids like that looking for us men and women of valor to stand up and say no to what's happening in our country. Do you realize that we have allowed for 70 years these little precious kids to be indoctrinated by the Antichrist in the public school system? I'm talking about literally the United Nations has been influencing the children. We've been in Babylonian captivity and you didn't even know it for 70 years. We have sent these little kids to these schools. And, and for the things to change, we got to take the school. How can we think we can do church twice a week and send them for 16,000 hours of their life, and then we're going to change the nation? You want to know why there's a moral decline? Because we let the Bible be taken out of the schools. The, the Lord told me in the 70th year anniversary, 2018 was the 70th year anniversary of the Bible being taken out of schools. 1948 is when it happened. I was 48 years old when he gave me the dream. Then... Uh, I was born in 1970. In the 70th year anniversary, he gave me a dream. He said, I'm going to show you how to get the tax money, and then I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, you're going to meet the president one day. And then he spoke to me. He said, the reason why they took the Bible out of schools is because the gatekeepers shrank back from the battle. We can't shrink back right now, y'all. You know, I understand some people might have died and people might have been, but the Bible says he who fears is not being made perfect through love. It says fear uh, has to do with the punishment of death. Okay, but see, if we already died, if we're just martyr, we ain't going to be afraid because we already invested in heaven, so to die is to gain. See, but the church is trying to hold on to this world because we're trying to live by bread. Understand? But God's trying to teach us right now. He's getting us in a position where nothing but God will deliver you from the situation you're in. 
because he's trying to wake us up because really there's eternal consequences that go along with it. Okay? So this one girl we encounter that comes into our house, she was a drug dealer, a murderer. She had HIV. And after about three months, they had all kinds of people pray over her. Nothing happened. After about three months, uh, she begins to say no to the Spirit speaking to her. And throw, uh, Ghostbusters. <laughs> On the ground, growling, snot bubbles coming out of her nose. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I'm talking about blowing bubbles out of her nose. All the other women, phew, they leave. They're like, no, <laughs> help. The leader's like, come help. I'm like, cast the devil out of her. She's like, no, I'm not ready for this. So we go. My wife starts casting devils out of her first. I get there, walk in, and then the devil goes, rah, freaks out. We go through four hours of deliverance with her. That day, she can't walk anymore. We carry her back. Next day, we're dealing with demons again. Two hours into deliverance, we encounter the demon of prejudice. Important for us to know now it's the same devil we're dealing with. So I commanded to come out in the name of Jesus Christ, and it says, no, she's mine. I've been here since she was a little girl. And he said with an attitude. <laughs> that shook my faith, y'all. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, commanded to tell you what right it has to be there. And so I did. I command you in the name of Jesus, tell me what right you have to be there. And it says, it's everything she was taught since she was a little girl. Now let that sink in of what's going on in the mainstream media right now. They are literally opening the doors for demons right now in an unbelievable rate. And it's the body of Christ that's the only one that has the power to do something about it. The anointing, the teacher in you, is the only thing that will set the captive free. You, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon you to open blind eyes, to set the captive free, to release the prisoner from dungeons. And some of our brothers and sisters are captive. I know many of them, pastors, right? Because the devil's evil and he's tricky. But God is smarter. God mocks the devil in the books, uh, the letters to the churches. He says, Satan's so-called deep secrets. The Bible says, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Why? Because if we don't realize there's a wrong, we can't repent from it, y'all. Okay? So we're going to point some of these things out So because the Bible says the people perish for lack of knowledge. I was in the army. you got to know your enemy. People don't want to talk about the devil, but that's a trick. you got to know your enemy because if you know his assets and how he operates, you can defeat him. Okay? And that's what we're talking about today, the deliverance of a nation. So I call the girl back up, and I tell her, I said, this devil says it's not leaving you. It's everything you were taught since you were a little girl. She screams at the top of her lungs, worst scream I ever heard in my life, and it coughs the devil up. I asked her later, because the screams caught me so off guard, why did you scream like that? She said, because I spoke it into every one of my children. Eight kids. She didn't want to do that. That's what deception is. People get taken captive by the lie of the devil. We can get taken captive by the lie of the devil. Okay, during this time, we're going to need spiritual sight like never before. And uh, Katrina, I'm from Louisiana, so we had Katrina. It was bad, y'all. I mean, it was bad. And all these people came up. They were raping, killing, murdering, everything. It was bad. They came up into our uh, city where we were at. And I was at Burger King one day, and the Lord said, watch them. They're carjacking people. This is the season that you're entering in right now. Our, we, our refuge is in the Lord. The Bible says the prudent see danger and take refuge. But the naive keep on going and suffer for it. I don't want you to suffer for it. Okay? We've got to take refuge in the Lord. You need spiritual 2020 vision at this moment. Spiritual vitamin C. Because it's going to protect you. Two years later, a man came into my house and his dad was killed in a carjacking, a Catholic priest. My God told me the difference was you were surrendered and submitted to me, and he was not. He was operating by bread, and you were operating by the manna that comes from heaven. It has to do with yieldedness. Are we the martyr? See, because when the martyr, are we the martyr? You don't, you don't hear God because you don't belong to God. He said, I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business, but I call you friends. You are my friends if condition. You obey what I command. 
if you follow Jesus, if you decided to do the will of God, you will see. Amen? I'm talking about getting people delivered, getting this nation delivered. we got to understand this principality that's affecting the land has been here since its inception. I was in a Jonathan Kahn meeting. Some of you may know him. He's got something coming up. I suggest we go to it, the return. We need to repent as a nation. In this meeting, it was a, a, a caring to love ministry, a, a life for abortion. And he says something. I'm a Jew, so I know what's needed to take advantage of a people group. He said you have to first dehumanize them. He said that's why they call a baby a fetus. Because if you call it a baby, you can't in good conscience kill it. When he said that to me, the Lord said, that's why they call the Native American a savage. Because then you feel justified in killing him and taking his land. We need to understand that this spirit's been in the land for a very long time. It is the same spirit responsible for 62 million babies crying out from the land right now. And God has given us some keys if we'll deal with it correctly. So this girl gets delivered. There's another thing. I was in a a mega church, and uh, I come back from a mission trip, and my pastor comes up. His eyes are big as silver dollars. He's crying. And I'm like, man, what's wrong? I thought, his, I thought his spouse died or something. I didn't know. It looked bad. I said, man, what's wrong? He goes, I got delivered. I said, what? Can you imagine? I've been taught by this pastor for like three and a half years. And he tells me he gets delivered. In my mind, I'm like, you had a demon? I'm like, do I have the demon? Because you've been teaching me. And I was short-circuiting. I'm just telling you the truth. And I think he saw it, and he goes, he explains, he explains what he's saying because he sees me short-circuited. He said, everything I was doing was wrong, and all that matters is God. And that was God. This is a pastor, I mean, sold out running for God. He didn't want to be there, but he stepped into a trap, the same trap that David stepped into. He began to put his faith in the ministry God gave him instead of the God that gave him the ministry. When we operate that way, we compete against one another, okay? And there can't be unity. See, there's unity when I come to bless you. When I come to bless you. When I come to bless you. And we got to battle the carnal nature that wants to hold on to things. Jesus said if you hold on to your life, you'll lose it, okay? So if we're losing our life, guess what? Something comes out of us called life, called the anointing, that drives out sickness, that heals the sick, that drives out devils. All that is called the anointing. But you have to lose your life to find it. That's what he's talking about. But if you hold on to your life, you actually bring this virus into you because you're having faith that it's going to kill you. That's what fear is, faith in reverse. I, heard this, I saw this sign one time. It was so awesome. Faith, uh, fear knocked, faith answered. No one was there. This is true, y'all. I'm telling you, man, there's a lot of lies that the church is believing. And I understand these things are real. But guess what? God's more real. Okay? God's more real than the flesh you're wearing on your bones. God's more real than the breath that you're breathing. Okay? God's more real than this natural world. And he'll, everything that came into this natural world came from God. And the wind and the waves still obey him. But it's going to take rock-solid face. A double-minded man shall not receive anything from God. Okay, it's time for us to be militant, y'all. Look the devil square in the eyes, grab him by his horns, rip him off and beat him in his face. That's what I'm talking about. You got to understand the God that's with you, man. Okay, I command angels to skull drag people, the devils. I do. I got big bad angels with me. They gangster. They like me because we got a lot of action going on. But they ready for you to say go too. Okay, we got to occupy. Say, I've given you the land, but you got to go possess it. There's giants in the land, but you got to come back with the report. They're like grasshoppers to me. What is COVID? If COVID is God, let's serve COVID. But if God's been God, let's serve God. I'm going to serve the God that answers by fire. Give me someone with COVID. I'm going to cast it out of them. That girl I was talking to you about, she had HIV. We drove the demon out of her. She's healed today. Okay, God's looking for us to believe, and I understand this is what the devil does. He gets us held and captive into a lie. And if, if we believe the lie, we're his puppet. A man is a slave to whatever he obeys. I'm not obeying COVID. I'm not obeying, so, I'm sorry. I'm not obeying, so. I'm sorry, I apologize. I can't apologize. I'm not obeying the mask. I'm not obeying the social distancing because I know it's spawned from hell. 
You don't want to know who the World Health Organization is? World Health Organization says that uh, uh, health for children is that children uh, need children need the right to sexual information and a right to sexual pleasure. That's who everybody just submitted to. And I don't mean to offend anybody, but much more dangerous than COVID is communism. Behind communism, over 200 million people died in the 20th century. That doesn't even equate to anything that we're talking about. Where, where George Floyd got killed, there's a big fist, a black fist sitting up in the middle of a hexagram, which is called a demon trap. It's a doorway for fallen angels where they command all their lower echelon angels, I mean, all lower echelon demons to go do their bidding. When you see what's happening, all these riots, because demons are going to affect people, that gate opened up. Joe, can you give me that, the fist sticking out of it? I want to show them at where George Floyd, at the exact location where he was killed. There's a fist in the middle of a hexagram with a circle around it. That's known as a demon trap. That fist is actually communism. You see that black fist, that idol right there? Right around it. There's a guy sitting on there. He's a warlock. It's like a bee on top of a hive. And I know most people don't know anything about the occult, but for whatever reason, God began to show me about Mystery Babylon, and, and I understood it. Mystery Babylon in the Bible is actually occult. And so that's a demon trap. That fist represents communism. To overthrow the nation, there's an upside-down cross and flag on that monument. And none of the church even realizes what it is, but God's given us the key to deal with it. That happened five days after God showed me what the gate was there. Um, and, uh, so I had this pastor, right? And, and that happened. What happened to him is he went to international house of prayer where they were praying for 24 hours a day for 30 years and the Holy spirit arrested him and he was on the floor weeping and repenting because he was simply doing things. Now they got a flower bed after I went and talked, see the flag upside down right there. That's the American flag upside down. What the intention is to overthrow the nation is an antichrist, a prejudiced antichrist spirit that's been in the nation since its inception. And, and North Carolina is a big part of that. We just found out. I, don't, I didn't know why God led me here. But at the same time Bob Jones the prophet was here, there was also Bob Jones the grand wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. I believe there's a gate open here. And this is why COVID started here. And God's calling y'all to deal with it. When I was in... Um, in a, so anyway, the, the pastor, I want to tell you this testimony first. So there's this another encounter. Um, well, so my pastor, he started prayer after he went to the International House of Prayer. And then uh, he put TVs up everywhere with IHOP on it. We were watching. We were praying from 10 to 12. And then uh, it went on for about a week or two. And then I walked into the door, and my pastor says, we're changing prayer to 12 so more people can come. And God yelled at me. He said, you need to pray more. And it shook me. So I started praying. I mean, we're praying from 8 to 10 and then 10 to 12. We take lunch, come back at 1. Third day in the prayer, the Lord speaks to me. He says, the church is married to the world. 2007. And is totally unprepared for what's coming. I'm talking about real lives dying, y'all. Real people going to hell. This is serious. So it's hard things to talk about, but we got to correct it. we got to have a course correction right now. And I'm just trying to illuminate because I kind of had an illustrated sermon. He said the church is married to the world and is totally unprepared for what's coming. Because when we're hooked up with the world and we're listening to him, we can't see. We can't have the spiritual sight. And that's what's going to be necessary. Just like I didn't get killed in carjacking, but this other guy did. That's the difference of being able to see and not see. And what's coming on the land, you're going to have to be able to hear and trust the voice of the Holy Spirit enough to move when he says move. You can't be married to the world. Remember Lot's wife. That's where we're at, y'all. Okay, it's going to be a glorious time, but it's a serious time. Okay, and I want you to be able to see, okay, above anything else, because I'm going to stand in front of God as a watchman. If I don't warn you about the problems, then I'm going to have blood on my hands. And I'm not willing to do that. I don't care if it costs my head. I'm not willing to do that. And I want, God loves you. God loves everyone. And, but he wants to use us. He wants to wake us up so that we can make sure people don't go to hell. That's the hour that we're in. 
we got to have spiritual vitamin C so that we can see. This going to keep us. So the Lord tells me that. He begins to empty me. Um, I was taught all these strategies. And then God bring, puts me in the inner city, and I'm starting to bring all these people together. I'm going to have a banquet hall. We're going to cast a vision. Everybody's going to give to it because it's so great. All I was taught in church planning, and the Lord says, if you're going to hold a banquet, hold it for people who can't give you nothing back. That was, that's martyr stuff, y'all. Do we really believe in the kingdom? And so God's trying to teach us if we want the capital of heaven, this is how it comes. We have to capitulate to one another. So there's this encounter I have. I'm trying to do one blood revival. I'll get to some of that other stuff. But I want to tell you about this encounter. I'm meeting with a, a white businessman. He is a pastor. He is over the homeschool network of Louisiana. He has the largest business of his type in the southeastern United States. I'm trying to meet with him so we can do this revival. It's $150,000 revival. As I'm talking to him, I give him the testimony about my pastor. When I do that, the glory of God falls on me. And God shows me he's ready to invest the blood of a thousand prophets to keep that one man out of hell. The revelation of that, because I didn't have it. And I, we don't have a revelation of eternity really, y'all. We live in the natural realm, only through God's spirit. And I begin to weep under the power of God to over that revelation because it's like eternal. It's like God's ready to do all that, and I'm just weeping under the presence of God. Then I begin to talk about um, the, the spirit and how God showed me pastors and government officials are opening the doors for demons in the hearts of people, and God shows me he's ready to invest the blood of a thousand prophets. That's like his best people to make sure that one person doesn't go to hell understand we don't understand what's at stake y'all jesus put the price tag on one soul worth more than the whole world they are eternal we gotta ask god for this burden for this sight so we can see if you want to see revival we gotta get an impartation of this because we ain't going to where where you not then you understand i gotta lay my life down i gotta die that's a small price but we got to have that revelation. That's why it's important to get in the power. Because only then do you purchase the gold refining fire and solve for your eyes to see that you understand really what's at stake. When God has placed the words of life in your hand. Amen. The words of life, y'all. Much more important than what happens in the natural. And the glory is just there. I start weeping in front of this guy. And when I give him the testimony that... She realized she spoke that demon in every one of her children. He coughs the demon up at the table right in front of me, at the lunch table. His eyes tear up. He turns red, and he coughs the demon up because he caught a revelation. Simple as that. Me and my wife were working with his son, and his son would say, where are the Mexicans at? Because they, they were illegal, and he's paying them cheaper wages, and so he's dehumanizing them. And he spoke in his children. And when, under the anointing, when I said that, the Lord said, you did that to your son. Boom, the devil came out of it. I'm talking about keys that can deliver a nation. So long story shot, short, Scott Neri prophesied to me in 2018. Um, I end up going to Azusa because I meet another guy that got trapped in the 2016 flood. The day I prophesied uh, that the greatest harvest of souls the earth has ever seen is about to hit the planet, the next day there was eight inches of water in my yard. And 5.30 on the 13th, I drove my van out with a one-foot wall of water in front of my van trying to escape with my possessions and my family. It flooded 140,000 houses because the churches came together and prayed that God would stop the racial rioting in Baton Rouge and the police getting killed. And the answer to prayer was a storm that sat on top of Louisiana and 140,000 houses flooded. So you got to understand God's ready to do whatever needs to be done to keep people out of hell. That's what we don't understand. But to navigate these type of things and to, to not lose heart, to become offended, to not turn away from the faith, you got to be able to hear God. you got to know what God's doing. you got to see. I wouldn't have been able to walk through that if I didn't get that word. The next day, you can go look on our website. I have this thing called uh, the Great Squirrel Rescue. My wife has a pet squirrel. Kind of crazy, huh? She loves a squirrel, too. I, like, it bit me one day, and I was like, I'm going to kill it. She started crying. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm stuck with this squirrel. So I'm walking through the flood, literally doing five-part series on the, the great pirate squirrel rescue, the infamous Jack Sparrow. And I get rebuked for being too happy in the middle of the flood and all this. But what God was ministering to me, y'all, because I heard God. 
Okay, so God can sustain us through these things and he'll use us through these things, but we got to hear God. Okay? What's happening in the nation is the same thing. We we shut down a drug corner. We had major turn in our city. They have governmental change happening right now with a mayor that's running with a uh, 24-hour prayer campaign in her campaign office. God used me to prophesy to her that he was replacing the other mayor and put her in a place. And it's happening. Okay? And you can look at it on the website. Uh, um, anyway, I'll try to. Um, it's uh, voicesofmercy.com. Um, and we, we were able to drive the LBGT agenda out of the city government because of what we did, because we listened, and God gave us keys, okay? So that happened with that guy. So I'm telling you that because these are the two main devils we're dealing with right now, and they tie to our, it's a prejudice antichrist spirit. You have a gate that's open in North Carolina. It had to do with the grand dragon of the Ku Klux Klan. He built that ministry more than anybody else in the United States. It, this is the headquarter for the Ku Klux Klan in this state. Um, I didn't know any of this until like two months ago. Um, but God is trying to use the spirit of Bob Jones, the prophet, to deal with that antichrist spirit that he was, they were dealing with one another when he was alive. But God's mission and mandate doesn't change. It's generational. He changes personnel. So God's wanting this house to deal with that, and I'm going to show you how to do it. There's another gate that's open. Give me the Dred Scott uh, uh, picture, will you, Joe? Um, there's another gate that's open in Minnesota. So after the One Blood Revival, uh, hold on, I'm going to stop for a second. I'm going to go back. So God sent us up to... Uh, to Azusa in the 112th year anniversary of Azusa Street. And he was telling us that the Native Americans had a key to be able to heal the racial divide in the United States of America. And this is what's about to happen. Seymour prophesied that the revival that would come would heal the racial divide in the United States of America. Now, he, these people are called GTN. They actually picked up a mantle of a guy named Tecumseh in 1811. He had a mantle to gather the tribal nations, but the last tribe wouldn't listen to him. So they're in Winder Rock, Arizona, and this guy's telling me they got trapped in the flood that started all this stuff. He's saying these guys have a mantle to heal the racial divide. That's what God's telling me. I believe they picked up this original First Nations people. How many of you know that if God gives a mandate to somebody that's in a nation, he's going to stay with those people? That's what the Bible teaches, right? Isaac, Jacob, right? Okay, so that's what's happening. So he's going to use the four First Nations. Critical and key about this house. Bob Jones, what did he prophesy? The, that the, when the Chiefs, Indian Chiefs, win the Super Bowl, that's going to be a sign to the Third Great Awakening. I was on a plane headed to Israel with the Navajo Nation um, president when that happened. 0202 of 20 of 20. You know what that is? If you put 2020 in front of a mirror, it turns out to 020202. God, 2020 vision, hindsight is 2020 vision. We don't need to forget our history, and sometimes we got to go back to where we got off to get it right, and that's what God's doing. There's got to be repentance. See, to deliver, you have to go where you got it off, and you got to repent from that thing so he loses the legal right, and that's what God's doing in the nation. Um, so God sends us to Azusa Street. We go meet with these Native Americans. I have a dream. My wife has a word. I have the dream. It's about the Native Americans and revival. I know I'm supposed to go into this territory, but I can't get in the territory for some reason, and I don't know why. I wake up, I'm like, man, I don't know what that dream meant, you know. And my wife says, I got a word for you. She said, God spoke this word to me all night long, wouldn't leave me alone about it. It's called, it's capitulate. I didn't know, I said, capitulate what? It took me three days to pronounce it. This happens, at, three times it's happened. It, it takes me three days to pronounce it every single time. I began to research it. It talked about uh, armies and surrender and treaties. So I thought maybe it was the treaties. I went and told the Indians. I said, oh, this is what, it, you know, this is what we heard from God, and this is what it means. And then the next morning, the, the Lord says, no, stupid, that's not what it means. Go back and tell them what it really means. I'm like, yes, Lord. So he said, the reason I gave you the dream and I gave you the white, your wife the word, that should encourage y'all. That should encourage y'all. You know, God can use somebody as stupid as me to do something, then he definitely can use everybody else, right? So he says, uh, you got to capitulate to the Native Americans. But get this, it's not just for the races, it's also for the churches. It's the key for unity that can bring revival. Capitulate is to lose your life. He told me, he says, if you will serve this ministry GTN that I've given this mandate to, and you will help them 
gather the tribal nations and give them the kingdom of God, then you'll remove the legal right that the principality of power of prejudice and antichrist has to the land. Why? Because it's a governmental sin. The U.S. government actually committed these sins. Okay, and because it's a governmental sin, only the government of God, the ecclesia of God, can undo it. Much like the reinstatement of Peter, that's what we're doing. I'm telling you, literally building their ministry. Okay, that don't make any sense, does it? So let me go build your church. But if we want to see the power, that's the type of attitude that we have to have. We have to, and, and we, get, we can't operate in fear. God said the biggest sin of the church is competing each other. He said, stop competing against each other and start capitulating. So here's another little cool thing. If you put the abbreviation of AZ, which is Arizona, in front of USA, what does it spell? Azusa. Man, God's preaching his own message. Azusa was a little Indian girl who had the power to lay hands on the sick. God's fixing to use the spirit of Azusa to lay hands on a sick nation. Okay, this ain't the only thing. You're talking about Reinhard Bunke. You're talking about Bob Jones. All these dots that are they're coming together. That, that time is now. I'm telling you these things so they're signposts. I need them. I need these type of confirmations. I'm not going to turn my life upside down. i got to hear God and know it's God so that I can actually undergo a violent death. Because... That's what we got to do. So we did it, and it worked. It was amazing. God had sent us to the place where the civil rights movement started in the United States of America. Most people don't even know this, but in 1953, you had something called the Baton Rouge Bus Boycott, and then it went all the way into Memorial Stadium. Martin Luther King actually came to Baton Rouge with T.J. Jimerson to find out how to do a civil rights movement. So we do the, the event, and then we have these two guys, Matt Lockett and Will Ford, that are preaching the last thing. They have a mantle for racial unity. It's beautiful. I encourage you to check out their book. It's called The uh, Dream King. Actually, one of them, uh, their family stitched the Confederate flag, and in the same place the first Confederate flag was stitched, the Confederate truce flag went right up. Because why? What is God saying? you got to go back to where you got off, right? And so that guy and this guy, uh, Will Ford, is from Lake Providence, Louisiana, because God's saying it's not a coincidence. It's the providence of God, if you'll recognize it. He's, he travels with a kettle. They met at uh, the Lincoln Memorial on Martin Luther King Day because they both had a dream about Lou Engle. They spend 10 years praying together, start writing a book together, and they find out that his family, Matt Lockett's family, that has a prayer house in D.C. and he fights for abortion, it actually owned Will Ford's family. One minute before the last speakers, they, they were them, get up to speak, and God moved from the stage underneath the stadium by rain, and they give us an illustrated sermon of why there's two doors on the men's bathroom because one was for blacks and one was for whites. And they receive a text alert from CNN that says, for the first time in history, the Confederate truce flag has just been revealed. And God spoke to me and says, that's my sign that this spirit has surrendered to you. Now go occupy. Over the past year, he's given us a blueprint on how to occupy the land, how to take the school system back while birthing sustainable revival. And it's just like what you're doing already prophetically. Um, but a key is when you encounter that son of peace, and what we've been seeing is the power of God shows up so strong you can't talk in it. I literally have to warn the canvassers not to disengage because that happened to me first. First time, I, I, the Lord says, tell her she's got light in her eyes. I said, you got light in your eyes. And the power of God fell so hard, I couldn't speak. I couldn't think. And I'm like, man, I look stupid. I got to leave. I said, here, give this to your leader. And I was like, why did I say that? I pulled away. And when I came out of the anointing, it was so powerful, I lost my balance. And I stumbled out the door. And the Lord said, he rebuked me. He said, make sure you warn your canvassers not to disengage when that happens. He said, that was the daughter of peace. Anytime that happens, look for the invitation to be invited back into their home. There's another encounter we had with a drug dealer, and God was telling us how to expose um, that there's a spirit behind uh, trying to destroy the black people, the white people, the red people. It don't care what color you are. In fact, it's the one that's over abortion, and it's killing every different skin color. But if we could articulate and show how that's happening, that it would have a unifying factor. We did that to this... Uh, drug dealer we were in the inner city uh getting a wallet for somebody and this drug dealer comes up on the side of us and he says uh, hey brother Devin." and this guy tried to get saved for 15 years i said hey daryl he said and the lord says 
tell him, tell him, tell him. So I got out and told him. I told him how they did the civil rights movement, and then they amped up entitlements behind it, but made it where the black man couldn't come into the black family because Marxism actually wants to destroy the family. That's what you got to understand. Black Lives Matter is a Marxist ideology. Look at their core values. They want to destroy the family. And so uh, I told him that, and I said, look, man, there ain't no white privilege. I said, there might be an Illuminati or some rich person privilege, but I scratch and scrape for everything I, I, I've got, and they're trying to cause a race war, and your people can die from it. I said, they did the same thing with the white family with Rosie the Riveter. They said, oh, she's got to become a part of the war machine and, and, and do all this. My grandma retired as a riveter, and then they amped up the women's live movement behind it. Why? To take the woman out of the household. The goal was to destroy the family to make the government a surrogate mother and father. When I said that, I said, this is an antichrist principle. The power of God hit him. He goes, he looks at me like that. He's like, what was that? You know, in his eyes, I said, that was the spirit of truth. Just told you what I said was the truth. I said, that's evidence. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He snatches the door hangers out of my hand. He goes, I got to tell my family first. He said, well, my family won't listen to me because I ain't living right. How about God preaches the message and you don't have to? It's re it works really well. And he says, man, I got to go to church. He goes, what church? And before he got church out of his mouth, the Lord said, don't bring him to church. He said, if you bring him to church, none of the drug dealers underneath him will get saved. He said, but if you'll disciple him in his house, every drug dealer underneath him will come to the house because that born-again believer is the best neon sign traveling all over the, the area that you can get. And they're going to be like, what happened to Joe? Man, that dude he won't smoke. He's not drinking. What's going on? I don't know. He's got some guy coming to his house. Man, let's go check it out. And he says, when they get into the close proximity of the life-changing, contagious power of God, they will all get born again. He said, this is the original model of evangelism that I gave the church. He told me in another word, he said, you will gather the tribal nations by the power of God. He said, the Son of Peace Oikos evangelistic model is power evangelism. The testimony that was told to Scott and Eric, that's the guy that prophesied to me and turned my life upside down. And so... He says, it has the power to drive oppression out of every reservation. Now, God spoke specifically to and about the First Nations people because he wants the ecclesia of God to correct things. There's severe oppression. These people are, are, are getting so drunk, they fall in the streets, they freeze to death in the streets. They're doing mass suicides, okay? And he's looking right now to the ecclesia of God to change something, and that is a key thing. If we want to remove the legal right, that that principality has. And here for this area, it has to do with COVID. And uh, it, it, you know, I have a video I can send you that shows where experts say that it was formed here in the lab. Uh, it's got HIV engineered into it and a protein to make it more uh, absorbable into the human body. And then it was bought, brought to Wuhan. Fauci, Dr. Fauci, actually uh, gave $3.7 million to do it. Joe, do you have that video with Fauci on it? I want to show you this video from Dr. Fauci because I want to expose things. You've got to understand there's a radical evil element that has always been trying to infiltrate our government. Okay, and there's a lot of false narratives. And so the Bible says you can be taken captive by a lie. There's some things that are being done that are actually making you more susceptible to be sick. And you've got to understand this Marxist element has engineered this virus. They have all of the media is controlled by the Council on Foreign Relations, the Tr Trilateral Commission, and the Bilderberg Group. It is funded by George Soros. It is the false prophet right now. Okay? You, and, and so their narrative, because God threw a, a wrench in their plans. His name's Trump. If you, want to know, if you want to know for sure he was sent by God, his first day in office, he was 70 years, 7 months, and 7 days old. That's God, man. That's divine order times 3, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I'm going to let you listen to this, and it, we should really know that we're in the twilight zone. My hope today is that you will be set free from the lie of the devil that wants to kill you. Okay? And we start dealing with things the right way. So go ahead, Joe. Uh-oh. No sound. Now, when you see people and look at the films in China and South Korea, whatever, everybody's wearing a mask. Right now in the United States, people should not be walking around with masks. You're sure of it, because people are listening really no. closely to this. Right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. 
when you're in the middle of an outbreak, wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better, and it might even block a, a droplet, but it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. And often, there are unintended consequences. People keep fiddling with the mask and they keep touching their face. So if you're touching your face and you got stuff from everywhere, you're putting it right by your face. Talk to several people, wore the mask, they got COVID. Okay, this can actually cause you to be more susceptible to it. Because their deal is they want as many people infected as they can. They want the death rate to be as high as they can. They're evil, man. This is the Antichrist spirit. When you look in the Bible, Revelation 17, 18 says, The woman that rides the beast is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. Okay? The United Nations, where the World Health Organization, is the only thing that rules over all the kings of the earth. Okay? And it's in the greatest city on the planet, New York City. Okay, in Revelation 17, 5 and 6, it says, the woman, you, mystery, the woman you saw, I saw this title written on her head, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes. That's what she wants to do. She wants you to prostitute yourself, to give up your birthright for a single meal, to live for this earth instead of heaven. He said, in the abominations of the earth, it says, I saw she was drunk. On the blood of the saints. Let me say that again. I saw she was drunk on the blood of the saints. Another cool thing you might want to know about Black Lives Matter is they want the LBGT agenda to have civil rights. They're trying to use, the spirit is trying to use the LBGT agenda to, to mount a religious war against Christianity. Literally what I just told you, drunk on the blood of the saints. When God reveals something, he's ready to deal with it, y'all. But it demands a response on our side. So I'm exposing it so you know what hour you're in. You know what the enemy's trying to do so that maybe you'll rise up and say, no, not on my watch. You know why Rodney Howard Brown was here? His daughter was killed. He, he made a vow to God. He said, I'm going to take a billion skull, souls from the devil. If somebody dies that you love, you should say a vow like that too. I'm going to take a billion souls. May it get, you need to get mad. You need to take territory. Make the devil pay. We can't just lay down. We can't shrink back. The Bible says we're not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but those who believe and are saved. God, this is the time. You heard it. Bob Jones said, when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, do we believe him? I believe he was a prophet. There's too many signs. Ryan Harbunke, the, the, the day he had his memorial was 1-4-20. This guy, Scott, I mean, there's too many evidences, but it demands a response. You know, when I go into a Walmart and they say, you got to put a mask on, I said, no, that's a health risk. I can't put a mask on. Then I walk in, like three people are like, how would you get in here with no mask? I said, man, that's a health risk. It's a health risk not to listen to God. It is, y'all. I'm telling you, it's a health risk not to listen to God. Jesus said, do not social distance. He said, cleanse the leper. Okay? In the Jewish time, he said, uh, uh, unclean, unclean. And you couldn't touch him. You had to stay away from him. But Jesus said, no. He said, go cleanse him. Go cleanse the leper. Okay? Heal the sick. Drive out devils. Devils ain't going to just give up their land. you got to drive them out. you got to push them out. So I, I was in an SOMI here. And, and this is how I got here. I was at this SOMI with Scott Neri, and, and the Lord tells me, uh, you need to go get with Rodney Howard Brown. I thought he was getting me to talk to Rodney Howard Brown, but he wanted me to meet you. You know, when I came up to your pastor, I came the next Sunday because everybody was wondering where I was at. So everybody came Sunday. I got a 12-minute word that told me everything I was doing right there in that room. I, was pretty, I still got it recorded. And I walk up to your pastor, and he goes, hey, man, where are you from? I said, Baton Rouge. He said, like, man, me too. Did you see that game? I'm like, yeah, that's the only game I watch. I hate Alabama. <laughs> he said, man, I think they're going to take the national championship. And he said, I think it's prophetic. He said, I think God's fixing to do something coming out of Louisiana that's going to change the nation. I said, really? Well, this is what we're doing. He says, yeah, I want to be a part of it. We've been waiting on this. And God's been speaking to us about it. That's how, that's how I met him. When I was there... The Lord revealed uh, the last key of the small hand shift nation. Scott Neri said, we're going to preach the gospel in the mall, but they won't let you preach there. He said, I want everybody to buy candy canes. And I'm like, okay. And he said, put you matter on it. Okay. And he says, uh, because if, it's suicide prevention month. And he said, if you go in there, tell them you're giving candy canes away. And you're telling them giving people candy canes for suicide prevention month. Tell them they matter. They'll let you preach the gospel the whole time. And I learned something in there. 
we were just moving around, and the glory was just drawing people. That was the first time I saw it. And God told me later, he said, the small hand shift nations that you're doing, the reason I told you to get door hangers, he, he told us also about the, the candy cane. He said the anointing's transferable. That's why Elisha picked up the stick and threw it where the axe was. That's why Paul sent out um, handkerchiefs and people were healed. He said, if you'll release the anointing, smear it on there. I'll speak to the people after you left. And I'm like, wow. He said the small hand shift nations campaign is the candy cane. It just gives us a great excuse to go to every door and tell people what's going on in the schools. We go to somebody's door. This is what we tell them. We say, hey, we're in the neighborhood telling people about legislation that will greatly affect you and your family. You say, have you heard of the H.R. 5 Equality Act? Let me get a show of hands. Who's heard of the H.R. 5 Equality Act in here? One person. That's dangerous. Okay, yeah, I told you about it. <laughs> That's dangerous because the Bible says the people perish for lack of knowledge. One person out of here, the devil works in darkness, and you need to expose him to defeat him. He cannot work in light. We tell the people at the door, we say, well, this passed through the House of Representatives by landslide, but if it's passed in the law, it'll make it legal for a grown man to go to the same bathroom as your little girl or granddaughter. When we tell them that, they, what? what? They come out on the front porch. They're looking through a crack about four inches wide, and they say, what did you say? They're ready to sign the petition at that point. But God said, at that point, I'm the MC of ceremony. He said, every other agenda stops, and I want you to do whatever I tell you to do. So God may give it somebody a word or whatever, but he said, watch for the son of peace. And when you encounter somebody that's hungry for the spirit of God, that's never met God, the power of God shows up that you can't even talk in it. But God, it's okay because God starts talking. And we're seeing people confess their deepest secrets and all this other stuff. This is what God gave us to occupy the land. Okay, but you need to understand that bill right there is being done intentionally by a Marxist, antichrist, prejudiced devil that wants to make the LGBT agenda a vehicle by which he can mount a religious war against all who oppose us. Good news is God is ready for us to have a Josiah generation moment, but we got to begin to cut down the idols and restore true worship to the house of God. That's what God's, that's, God's ready to do that now, but it depends on us. So um, May, when, I, when I left that SOMI, the Lord tells me, I want you to do a one blood revival in Minnesota. He had sent us up there twice throughout the year, and uh, we'd already been up there twice. He gives me the date. I want you to do a one blood revival on 9-11-2020. He said because it's an emergency. Scott Neri set his family um, reunion date on the same day. I didn't understand why then, but now I do. Because God's wanting to deal with something here. And that's going to be a body of believers that, that y'all can yoke up. And that, that spiritual anointing can deal with this. And I'm going to speak to them on Tuesday. Um, he says, just like oranges get ripe just before winter because you need vitamin C to fight off the flu, the body of Christ is fixing to enter a winter season. And you're going to need spiritual vitamin C to navigate the course that's in front of you. Boy, was that true? We had a flu. And it's all crazy. You had to be able to see behind it. I went to a meeting after that, and uh, it was the Mississippi River Revival meeting. It's in a barn. Didn't Bob Jones prophesy barns? This place is literally in a barn. It's literally in a barn, very connected with what we're doing. In that meeting, the guy interrupts his guest speaker, and he says, I feel like the Lord wants to give me, this, me to give this testimony. He said, my friend Israel Hanna was told by God to go from Minnesota down to New Orleans and pray over every city and town along the Mississippi River and blows so far. He said he arrived in New Orleans in 1998 at 9 a.m. in the morning on 9-11. That's two years before the Twin Towers. A lot of, we got to understand some things that are happening right now. The Twin Towers were hit at 846, okay? If you add 8, 4, and 6 together, it's 18. You divide it by 3, it's 666. The occult uses those numbers in hidden ways. They believe it gives them more control over you. George Floyd... They got shirts that say 846 with George Floyd. The prosecutor, you can see it right there. The prosecutor said, no, it was only 7 minutes and 46 seconds. Do you have that one up there, Joe? Can y'all see that? I don't know if that one's up there. Oh, that's September 11th. You got the other one with 846? Anyway, the prosecutor says it was 7 minutes and 46 seconds. So you got to ask yourself, why has the media changed it? Because it's the occult. They're literally being controlled by the occult. And God's trying to show the body of Christ what's, what's going on. This spirit that should have been dealt with at 9-11. They told us bin Laden did it, but anyway, there's a lot of evidence that says the contrary. 
God in that judgment comes because of the sins of the world. It may be d- done by the enemy, but it's because we, as not walking in the right place, allow God's hand of protection to come up. Because the Bible says, uh, have none, it says, put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. When you walk in light, the protection of God is on the land. It's on you. And, that, and that's how it works. God wants to deal with the spirit. So I got the guy, and I said, I need to talk to this guy to get more insight in it because this is critical. I felt the anointing fall on me, and we had been given seven signs before the One Blood Revival that the Mississippi River would move, okay? You hear about this Mississippi River Revival, but what if the catalyst is judgment? Do you know that the Azusa Street Revival, the catalyst was an earthquake? One guy was passing out and saying, last call, last call, last call. They had the earthquake, and then boom. That everybody got everybody's attention. Like, oh, no, this is really serious. Oh, we better get serious. And there was revival, and it, it, and it changed a lot of things. So I get with this guy, Israel Hanna. I said, man, I need some more insight about this testimony. It was a confirmation to uh, the date for this revival. He says, uh, yeah, the Lord was telling me to go down the Mississippi River and to pray over every town. He said, but I told the Lord, this is going to turn my life upside down. I need a confirmation. And he said, okay, I'll give you a confirmation. I want you to leave at 9 a.m. in the morning on 9-11. So he left and he arrived at the same exact time. No man could make that happen. It's a sign from God. He also said when he was on that river, the Lord told him that river would move by an earthquake. Since then, the, since 2014, the New Madrid earthquake zone has become the most active zone in the planet. You know, the Bible says God does nothing unless he first tells his prophets about it. I've already moved my house. God told me to move out the city and moved into the, to the country. We can position ourselves. But I'm telling you this, not to put fear in your heart, but the Bible says the prudent see danger and take refuge. There is a solution, but we got to rise up right now. we got to push COVID out. we got to tell the government, no, we ain't submitting to this. No, we got to move. When after the One Blood Revival, we drove out the LBGT agenda, this is why. I'm in a meeting. Everybody tells uh, this guy why we shouldn't be doing it. The Lord just gives me a word. He says, son, this is how you move politicians. This is how you move the devil. And this is what the body of Christ has to do if we're going to change things. I said, look, that's the leader of the Southern Baptist Convention. That's the leader of the Assemblies of God. I said, these two people have uh, television stations. We're about to tell everybody we know what you're doing. And I'm pretty sure you'll never be reelected to anything in Louisiana. Oh, okay, okay, okay. What, we got to get the devil to submit to us, y'all. Okay? We, 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 the whole church is just submitted to the devil. Uh, it may be real, but it's spawned from the devil. The Bible says a man is a slave to whatever has mastered him. I am not going to be. Bro, you have to cut my head off to get me to wear a mask or for me to social distance. And I'm ready to take the government to court. You know what? If you'll go take the government to court, God will give it to you. So anyway... The next thing that he will, I'm telling you, we already took the government to court. We did in like seven, seven years ago, and uh, they gave us the whole thing, okay? We actually have a federal lawsuit against the U.S. Department of Education right now. God told us to do it on March 10th. Anybody know what March 10th was? He gave us five signs that were undeniable. The last one was 777 Florida Street was the location of the U.S. Uh, uh, federal court in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Purim is on March 10th. Y'all know what Purim is? That's the day the Jews celebrate Esther going to the king and Haman being hung on his own gallows. Do you know that these masks and stuff are creating a great opportunity, people not going to school? That's creating a great, great opportunity for tell the government, you need to access that money to us so we can homeschool our kids. Because, you know, how about we use, get smart and use his own sword to cut his head off with? Amen. But it's going to demand a response. I can't do it by myself. Your pastor can't do it by himself. And right now, we got to get militant. I encourage you, man, to get with this man. We, we need to do stuff. We need to push back, raise up a voice, connect with anybody we know. The, the church of the living God is unstoppable if we unify. That's why the devil's so busy dividing us. He wants to divide the church, the race. Why? Because he knows as soon as I come in contact with you, I become ten times more powerful. Synergetic power, uh, agreement, synergetic unity, amplified power through agreement. You're like a nuclear reactor. When you come in contact with another person, there's about to be an explosion. Okay? The devil will, I'm telling you, drive the devil out. Now is the time. Now is the time to take over. God has just showed you everything that's happening. We, we start, so God tells us on, Mar, on May 20th, he says, look up, look up Minnesota in the Civil War. So I do, and then boom, the catalyst for the Civil War happened in Minnesota. 
in Fort Snelling. I'm like, God is so ready to move, y'all. It's not even, it's crazy. Fort Snelling, Harry and Dred Scott were married. Then they also had the Dakota Wars, which uh, 38 Native Americans were killed in. He said, these are two governmental sins that have given this devil the principality of prejudice and antichrist, a legal right to the land. So we start moving towards it. And then five days later, the, 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 the Floyd thing happened. You know what that is? That's a manifestation of a devil that's scared of the church. That devil said, oh, no, he knows what the key is. Oh, no, oh, we got to do something. And so now he went into intimidation mode. This is what devils do. When I told that devil to come out that girl, he says, no, she's mine. I've been here since she's a little girl. That's exactly what's happening. But I didn't stop, and I drove the devil out of her, and she's saved today and delivered. What you're seeing today is the deliverance of a nation, but it demands a response upon the church. Okay, we can, today's complacency will become tomorrow's captivity. The only thing that's needed for evil to prevail is for good men, you and you women and men here, to do nothing. Your children's future is at stake. My children's future is at stake. And you know what? We all got different things, but right now we need to come together and move like an army. Okay, we need to get over the inconsequential issues that divide us. We don't need to be talking about when you want to baptize in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or whether in the name of Jesus. How about we stop them teaching our kids they might want to change their gender? How about that? Can we unify on that? How about we stop this devil that's trying to take the church out right now? Do you know that Bill Gates' uh, application for petition is uh, WO, World Order, 2020, this year he wants to do it, 06, 06, 06. It has a cryptocurrency tied to a vaccine called ID2020 where they're going to monitor your behavior to see if you're submitting to the all-powerful political boss called the Antichrist, and they'll give you more money. This stuff, you can't make this stuff up. I know it's hard to believe, but it's here, y'all. But guess what? God has given us signs that he's ready to hang Haman on his own gallows. Okay, Kent Clement prophesied in 2007 on April 4th. You know what April 4th is? April 4th is the anniversary of Martin Luther King being assassinated. You know why? Because it's the revival that Seymour prophesied. I'm going to heal the racial divide. I'm pointing to the thing that's a problem, and I'm showing you how to do it. See, that girl never got delivered to that prejudice spirit until she got taught the word of God for three months. We'll never deliver this nation until we take the schools. I'm talking about the takeover, y'all. I'm talking about the church rising up, taking the school system back, birthing sustainable revival. And we push that devil back in the corner because all he can do is roar. He ain't got no teeth. We got to become sober-minded, y'all. Okay? We can do it. God gave us. This ain't my idea. It's too complex. It can't be a man. I'm just telling you. Nobody's going to take credit for this. So we start moving towards it. My wife finds a stadium. The stadium opened on April 13, 2019, in the 400-year anniversary of slavery, because God wants to deliver us of what's been happening in this nation. On the same day, the Confederate truce flag was revealed. It says united in 15-foot letters right there. The guy that built it prayed that God would use the location to heal the nation. It's on 400 Snelling Avenue. God is preaching his own message. Okay? But he's looking for the church to move with him. So I'm, today I'm asking you to move with me to help deliver a nation, to help secure the future for our children. All kinds of prophets telling us what's going to happen, but nobody's telling us what we can do. I came here today to tell you what we can do. And it's called takeover. It's called doing what the father of this house said was going to happen. Okay? So America can be saved. So your children can have a future. This land was paid for in blood, y'all. Thomas Jefferson said, I pledge on the altar of God eternal hostility towards every form of tyranny against the mind of man. Will you today pledge on the altar of God eternal hostility towards every form of tyranny against the mind of our men? Our children right now are being indoctrinated by the Antichrist. I didn't go much into the PowerPoints. Go voicesofmercy.com. You can go there. You can look at the One Blood Revival, also the Small Hand Shift Nations. It's complex. God has given us a strategic. A lot of it is exposing what's happening. Most people don't know that there's a contract agreement between Bill Gates and UNESCO, the United Nations Scientific and Cultural Organization, where they've been sending 5 million to 10 million data points on your children every single day profiling them and you through your children to understand at what speed that they can 
manipulate your children further so that they'll be ready to receive the Antichrist when he shows up. But God has given us a solution. I'm asking you to move with me. There's things you can do here locally. We need to get with the Native Americans. He says there's a chief building a house right up here. We need to go to every Native American tribe. And God is trying to use the mantle of Bob Jones to deal with the grand dragon Bob Jones. That gate that was probably open before with the Native Americans. I talked to a couple here and they're having a dream about a Native American over and over. We need people to go to the First Nations we have the Small Hand Shift Nations toolbox that you can just give to them, and I'll help you do it. But God's looking for yes. After we do the one, after September 11th, we need to occupy the land. And so if that's something that you're willing to do, um, I'd like you to raise your hand, and I'd like to give you something. Joe. We Hey, if you'd like to be baptized this morning, we know we have a group from Kentucky that's got to get back to Kentucky. You'll see Shirley right over by this door, and uh, she'll take you downstairs. But if anybody else would like to be baptized, uh, just follow my beautiful wife, and she'll give you all the things you need. But I know those guys have to get on the road. But anyway, this, we know why you came. How many of you know why you came? This is where we've been. This is where we are. This is where we're going. Keep going. Hallelujah. If you, if you would like to be a part of shifting the nation and you want to do more than just pray, you actually want to put boots on the ground and you want to be a part, we want to try to mobilize you. And there, you, you can do several things. First, we need to go to the tribal nations before September 11th, but after that, the small hand shift nations. And this is going to build your church and occupy the land here. Um, if that's you, I want you to lift your hand. Joe, Joe, will you grab those? They got people that want to be a part. Give them cards. Joe is going to bring a card. Thank y'all for responding. Thank y'all for responding. Thank you for responding. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to help Joe pass out cards. Okay, they got some other people. Hallelujah. Just one more quick, one more quick thing. Alex, could you make sure we have somebody over at the door? Hey, we want to receive an offering for this guy. He's got a big task ahead of him we want to support. So anyway, there'll be somebody at the door when you go out today. If you'd like to give, you can write a check to the gathering. But whatever goes in that will go to this mission, amazing mission. A boy from Louisiana is going to change the world. No, the nation. We. We are going to change the world. Because this key is too big to turn by yourself. Everybody's going to be involved.